Hello everyone, bring you a video today uh, prompted by a message sent to me by my friend Jake Brown, who has his own YouTube channel. Uh, link over to to his channel uh, in, a, in a card should you wish to go and have a look. He's also a, he also does videos on British military and so forth. Uh, but he linked me an interesting video um, from a chap called Bex Bug Out Survivor, who I think is a, more of a, well, looking at the channel, more of a prepper sort of thing as opposed to collector or military uh, content and things like that, um, who had an interesting method of attaching 1958 pattern rear pouches to the belt. It looked very secure and it, I'm fully uh, on board with the idea that it prevents the tabs and so forth pulling out inadvertently. Obviously, 1958 pattern uh, rear pouches attached to the belt using a quick release tab system and keyways that loop over aluminium rings on the back of the pouches. Uh, obviously there's various different methods of doing this. The upper rings aren't, uh, aren't uh, present on all of the different designs of the pouch. They were introduced later on because they tended to sag away from the body without them and obviously the design changes. But the way he shows, uh, the method he shows in his video, uh, much as I say, I'm sure it does very securely attach the the rear pouches to the belt. He claims it's the one correct method and that it's the official, it's an official MOD sanctioned method. Uh, now, I have a, a query relating to this because uh, all the fitting instructions which exist for 1958 pattern, and I'll put a link in a pinned comment down below to the Khaki Web page that, that has these, they actually have digital copies you can go and look at, uh, from 19, um, I think 1959 right the way through to 1990, they have these fitting instructions with illustrations or photographs, all show the method that I'm going to show you now in the video. So what I'm going to do now is attach the, the rear pouches for the 1958 pattern equipment in the prescribed manner as shown in the fitting instructions, which are, as I say, are freely available on, on Khaki Web, link down below. Uh, and we've got this set up here. I've not attached the ammunition pouches to the belt just to make it a little bit easier to maneuver everything. So we'll bring the belt in here. Just lay it across the back of the, the rear pouches there. And we want the uprights on the yoke to line up with the top tabs there. Very, very simple. Keyways come over. There we go. Pull that one out. It's underneath. There we go. Okay. So it's nearly there. Just take the quick release tab here. Fold over. There we go. According to the fitting instructions, loop this behind the belt, the upright strap there, obviously not present on all pouches. First and second issue don't have this upper set of loops. Just press that in there and put that over to keep it attached to the upright straps. It's a little tight in and of itself. Uh, just pull that down a little looser. Uh, there we go, that's it. Okay, the same on this side, exactly the same. Pass those through that. And again, and an interesting feature of this, of course, just to talk about briefly, is these upper quick release tabs here. Are, we're a later part of the design, as I say, not present on the first and second issue pouches because uh, they were introduced because the top of the pouch had a tendency to sag away from the belt, which was not ideal. And this means that obviously the top of the pouch is now held captive to the brace, uh, to the um, upright on the yoke rather, so they don't sag away from the body. This, as I say, is the method illustrated in the fitting instructions available on Khaki Web, in contrast to what we're going to have a look at in a minute, which is uh, Beck's, Beck's Bug Out Survivor's method. Uh, and essentially you'll want to compare the two in this video, that's the idea. Now, according to all the information I've seen, that's the official method. Uh, as I say, all the fitting instructions I've, I've seen show this. Now, when I questioned the method used by Bex Bug Out Survivor, uh, which I'm going to show you momentarily a clip from his video showing how he attaches them, he did state it was an official MOD method and he provided me a link through to a, a type, uh, well, uh, instructions um, in a comment. Uh, but the photographs in those instructions showed the method that I've just shown you in this video. So I'll show you Beck's Bug Out Survivor's method now. And bring these tabs down onto the outside loops. Now at this point I saw somebody on YouTube just get this part and thread it through three, two and one. That's not correct. Here's what we do. So here's the inside of the belt. 
here's the outside as you'd be wearing it this here has to come to the outside first okay then to the inside placing this loop here onto number two loop then we can fasten through number two then number one but before we get to there you remember this gap here behind the D is where we thread the upright for the yoke and it just simply pushes up behind this D ring and pops out here and here it comes out the other side get that snugged up okay now we can come back to number two placing this ring over number two bring that through fasten up number one and lock this into place like that now it's made this loop here now that is to place your belt through it it is an exact size for the belt nothing has been left to chance this material is not there by accident and I'm gently going to thread all this belt through that loop now watch what happens once it's all tidied up there you have it that is all as it should be locked into place so we've pulled our webbing under the D-ring there I'm going to place the webbing between these two metal rings here and contrary to what anyone else tells you you do not thread then through here and here to lock it off it will leave this unnecessary loop I lay it flat over making three sections of webbing and this will increase the volume of this aperture making it tighter I feed this around the back of the webbing and then we can thread working again from the outside to inside always outside to inside through that one and this one and you can see it's getting quite tough to thread through that's because it is now going to lock into itself so basically what i'm wondering and i know there are quite a few um x quaddies who watch my videos and i've been very very grateful from your input uh, on anything from rations to equipment to where you carried bits and pieces all of that sort of stuff is always fascinating to hear your opinions on what you know what was good and what was bad in terms of army kit and so forth is always very interesting to hear from people who've actually used the stuff but my question to you is, did any of you use the method shown by Bex Bug Out Survivor, which I've obviously just shown a clip of in this video? Did any of you use that method whilst in the, the army? And was it unit sanctioned? I mean, one question I did ask was whether this was a unit specific. So I thought one thing to do would be to bring this to people's attention and to ask if anyone else used this method whilst they were in, in the army. Uh, and obviously in that case, you know, where did it originate from? Uh, as I say, I can see from the, the way he's done it, it looks very secure. Uh, obviously, you, you, you lose the ability to detach the pouches whilst wearing the equipment, which obviously you can do. You can reach around the back and uh, pull the quick release tabs whilst wearing the equipment and drop the pouches uh, without having to take the web equipment off with the prescribed method as shown in the fitting instructions. But if you didn't want that, if you didn't want the tabs pulling out by accident, which I don't know if that's a possible problem uh, or a problem anyone experienced while they were in the army, again, that's perhaps another question for you. Uh, if you wanted to to get rid of that chance of the quick release tabs pulling out, you could obviously do it the way Bex Bug Out Survivor shows in his video. Um, but as I say, uh, I'm just trying to, to ascertain whether this is genuinely uh, an official method or whether it is just an expedient uh, that perhaps Bex Bug Out Survivors are using to attach the pouches at the rear. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, as I say, 
uh, always interested to find out of, uh, of user mods and so forth in the field. Um, and uh, hopefully this will um, answers to this might uh, might uh, present a bit more information on that. If you like this sort of stuff and you like the, these sort of talks about how British kit was worn, and obviously uh, if you find it interesting, sort of trying to inquire into this and find out more, uh, you might like to see more of my videos. And if so, um, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, and whether you're newly subscribing or you've already subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little notification button, the little bell down below, which will uh, alert you when I upload future videos. Um, there is, of course, also a Patreon. If you really like my, my uploads and you'd like to support the channel, uh, there's both a Patreon and a PayPal link down below. And thank you very much to everyone who supports the channel using those two methods. It's really greatly appreciated. And thank you very much for that. Um, there is, of course, also social media. There's a Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter page linked down below should you wish to check the channel out on there. And also, there is a, an email address. Should you not use social media and want to contact the channel, then please do so by uh, using that method. It's uh, I check the inbox fairly regularly, so it's a good way of getting in, in touch with me. Uh, but uh, I think that's everything for this video. So uh, until next time, bye for now.